Hey everyone, my name is Jessica, and this week we're starting a brand new series. And the name of this series is a word most of you know and use a lot, like a lot. The series is called Awkward. Awkward, awkward, awkward. All right, now this is getting awkward. So if you're anything like me and my friends, you've experienced some pretty awkward situations in your lifetime so far. Here's a few examples. Seeing my teacher when I was out to eat with my family. Waving at someone who I thought was waving at me, but they weren't. Hey! Oh, I don't know you. Ugh, so awkward. My dad telling dad jokes when my friends were over. Learning about the Human Growth and Development Unit in health class. Ew. Accidentally responding to the wrong group chat with a funny text I meant to send just to my best friend. Putting ketchup on my plate at dinner and the bottle made a fart noise. I agree. Those are pretty awkward. They're cringy and uncomfortable and embarrassing. And because of that, they make us feel awkward too. I think for most of us, awkward moments are something we try to avoid. Today though, we're going to lean into one of the things that near the top of your list of awkward stuff, attraction and sexual desires. Yes, that's right. We're gonna be talking about sex here at church. Awkward, right? While you might feel weird or uncomfortable or strange or even awkward talking about things like sex, let me assure you that you're not alone. In fact, these feelings are so normal. And even though it might be easier to avoid the awkward moments of having to hear the word sex or sexual desires at church, we believe that this is the best place to have these conversations like this because we care about you and want to help you understand what this stuff means for you, even if it might be a little awkward along the way. Now, there are a few words that are going to come up a lot. So let's start by getting on the same page about what these words mean. First, let's talk about attraction. When I say attraction, I mean a feeling of liking or being interested in someone or something. You're also going to hear me mention sexual desires throughout this series. Here's what I mean by that. The word desire simply means a strong feeling of wanting to have or do something. And when I talk about sexual desires, I'm talking about sexual things that we feel or think about or want to do. Let me give you some actual examples of what all of this might look like. When you think someone is really, really cute, or when you wanna sit next to someone because you just wanna be near them, or when you get that nervous feeling in your stomach when you talk to a certain somebody, or when you think about that person you like all the time, even when you aren't with them, or when that person sends you a DM or Snapchats you a cute picture of themselves, or when you have a desire to express your feelings through kissing or touching, or when you think about doing things beyond kissing or touching someone that you're attracted to, or when you're tempted to look at pictures you find attractive. All that stuff, they're examples of desires that you may be experiencing right now. And here's the thing about that. Having this kind of attraction, these kinds of desires, is both normal and natural. In fact, God actually gave us the ability to experience that kind of attraction and desire. Here's what I want you to know right away. This is not easy. I get it. Sometimes the stuff we see or hear makes us feel awkward. Or maybe we want to know more. Maybe we're curious, but we've never talked about it before because we're not sure if it's even okay to talk about. Or maybe we don't like talking about it because we don't understand it. After all, we might not be experiencing attraction or desires, and we may not have a lot of interest in things like dating and sex. That's okay. Here's why it's so important for us to talk about this stuff here at church. Attraction and desires are not bad things. And being curious and having questions about them isn't wrong either. It's not something that we have to be embarrassed or feel awkward about. In fact, it's actually part of the way we were designed. See, we were all created by God to experience attraction and have sexual desires. We were made to express our desires in ways that are good and loving and natural. That nervous or excited feeling you get when you like someone, when your hand bumps theirs or even when you think about them, that's a good thing and a normal thing that you were created to feel. The problem comes when we're not sure how to respond to those desires or how to even talk about them with someone else. But trust me, there's an answer. There's a specific plan that God created for attraction and sexual desires. And even if it's awkward, I wanna talk about it today because it's something I really want you to understand. We're going to look at some wise advice about sexual desires written by a really important guy named Paul. Now, 
Paul wrote a lot of books in the New Testament, which is the part of the Bible that's about Jesus and what happened after he was on earth. These books written by Paul were actually letters that he originally wrote to the Christians to help them understand how to live and follow Jesus together. See, following Jesus was a new thing back then. And because of that, people needed help figuring it out. Paul was really good at helping them see what mattered to God and what should matter to those who follow him as a result. And honestly, I think we'd all say we need that kind of help still today. That's why I think we can turn to Paul's words to help us understand a little more about what we're supposed to do with our God-given desires. Take a look. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Now, I know that's a lot in just two verses, so let's break it down. Paul started off by talking about who God is. He's someone who offers us mercy. Mercy simply means getting compassion and kindness when you don't deserve it. When your teacher doesn't take points off your homework for being late, even though those are the rules, she's showing you mercy by not giving you the bad grade you deserved. We all mess up sometimes because we're all human. We make mistakes and wrong decisions that don't always line up with what God has in mind for us. We end up choosing to do things that we want to instead of doing what God wants for us. That's called sin and because of sin, we all deserve to be separated from God. But instead, God had mercy on us. He sent Jesus to save us and bring us back into a relationship with Him. That is the ultimate act of mercy. Paul was saying that because God has been merciful to us, we can know that He is kind to us. That means we can trust Him when He tells us the best way to live. We can respond to what God has done for us by living the way He calls us to live. He wants us to live with integrity. And integrity means doing the right thing in all circumstances, even if no one is watching. And when it comes to our sexual desires, he wants us to live with sexual integrity. That means choosing to respond to the sexual things we feel, think, and desire in a way that respects ourselves and others and God. Paul explained that we should use our sexual desires in ways that are pleasing to God. It's not that we are supposed to get rid of our desires or ignore them. It's natural to have them, but we should respond to our desires in ways that are good and pleasing and honorable to God, ourselves, and others. That's sexual integrity. You see, God designed sex as a way for a married couple to connect with each other on a deeper level. It's a way to express their love for each other. And when we set boundaries and respect others and ourselves, we're choosing to honor God's plan for sex. In other words, what we do with our desires matters. Sounds great, right? Well, not so fast. It's one thing to read verses like this and hear messages about God's good plan for our desires, but it's another thing to actually know how to live it out on a daily basis. When we find ourselves curious to watch that video or interested in holding hands with that new person at school or drawn in by those pictures on Snapchat, or we're just curious about the ways our bodies are changing, then what do we do? How do we actually respond in a way that honors God? Well, let's look back at the last part of Paul's letter here. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. We can start by renewing or changing our minds. We can ask God to show us His plan for our desires. We can ask Him to change the way we see it, to understand it better, to notice how His plan impacts our lives. And we can trust His plan because it is good. See, when it comes to all of this attraction stuff, God is actually for you. The way he asks us to honor him with our desires is a good thing. He wants to help us express our desires in ways that are healthy and positive for us and for others. And when we start by changing our minds and asking God to help us see things the way he does, we'll be able to pay more attention. We'll be able to notice when our responses to those desires are off. And we'll be able to notice when someone else is encouraging or even forcing us to act in a wrong way, a way that doesn't fit with what we know God wants for us when it comes to sex and sexual desires. There may even be some of you who feel like the choice has been taken from you. Maybe you've been shown pictures or videos that you didn't ask to see, and that confused you. It made you feel things you weren't sure about or even ready for, and it's maybe even something you feel a lot of guilt about. If that's you, let me just remind you that it's never too late to choose sexual integrity for yourself. The choice is still yours, no matter what has happened in the past. And someone like your group leader would be a great person to talk to about some of the things you may be feeling right now. Or maybe 
you've experienced sexual abuse or harassment. If that's you, I am so sorry. What's been done to you is not your fault. What's been done to you does not impact your sexual integrity. Something that has been done to you does not determine if you are honoring yourself or others or God with your own desires. So if that's something you're dealing with, I'd love to encourage you to talk to your group leader about it. They want to see you get the help and support you deserve. Because for everyone, the truth is this, God loves you. He created you to experience attraction and desires. And what you do with your desires matters. So. What can we do to make sure what we do with our desires matters? Well, here are a few thoughts. First, choose sexual integrity. Remember, sexual integrity is choosing to respond to the sexual things we feel, think, or desire in a way that respects ourselves, others, and God. You have a chance right now to set a standard for how you're going to respond to your desires. You get to decide how you're going to act, what pictures you're gonna post or forward on, what you're going to wear or not wear, the words you choose to use when you speak. You get to choose what you're going to watch or look at or think about. And maybe up until now, you found yourself not choosing sexual integrity. Maybe you've made decisions that haven't honored God with your desires. Or maybe you've even found yourself in situations that you didn't expect or ask for. Situations that you weren't ready for and didn't seek out for yourself. For any of us, the good news is, is that no matter what we've chosen or dealt with in the past, we can always begin to choose sexual integrity today then pay attention. You know, God has a plan when it comes to your desires. God designed sex as a way for a married couple to connect with each other on a deeper level. It's a way to express their love for one another. So when you hear or see something that doesn't match up to that plan, pay attention. Notice things that push you or tempt you to not honor yourself or others or God with your own desires. Finally, talk about sexual desires in positive and appropriate ways with adults you trust. They can help you set healthy boundaries and they are a safe place to process struggles or questions you have about this stuff. You might not think of your group leader as an expert on this topic, but I promise they have more wisdom and insight than you think. And besides that, they love you and want what's best for you when it comes to sex and sexual desires. Okay, so I hope that wasn't as awkward as you thought it would be.